community and Greater New Life Baptist Church. Thank you to, to the two congregations, to the pastors for giving me this incredible honor to address you in this historic sanctuary. My name is Aftab Pureball. I'm the Democratic nominee to run for the United States Congress, and I'm going to proclaim it. We are going together. We are going together. My name is Aftab. I'm incredibly proud of my name. If you've seen our TV spots, you know it means sunshine. I'm the son of a refugee. My mom is from Tibet. She was forced to flee her home country when the communist Chinese took over. My grandparents and my mom picked up, made their way to India where she grew up as a refugee against, against all odds. She got an education. She made it to college where she met my father. The young couple got married and they decided they wanted to come to the new world. They wanted to come to the United States. So my dad looked at a map of our great country and from sea to shining sea, from New York to California, this crazy man literally could have gone anywhere. He chose Beaver Creek, Ohio. <laughs> no idea what he was thinking, y'all. He, he, he immigrated here in 1980. I was born a couple years later. Went to public schools, then off to Ohio State for college, where I was student body president. I moved down to Cincinnati to attend the UC College of Law, where I worked at the Legal Aid and Domestic Violence Clinic, representing battered women and couldn't afford an attorney. After law school, I worked at a large law firm in D.C. for several years, but I got homesick. Oh, I'm half Indian, half Tibetan. I look Hawaiian, but I'm all Ohio. <laughs> so I came back to Cincinnati, and I served as a special assistant U.S. attorney. Uh, most recently, I was the global brand attorney for Oil of Olay, but I then decided I wanted to run for office. And I didn't decide to run for school board or for city council. I decided to run for the Hamilton County Clerk of Court. And right off the bat, people said, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? You're going to run for an office no one's ever heard of against a two-term Republican incumbent who can't be beaten in conservative Hamilton County? And oh, by the way, you're a brown dude named Aftab. <laughs> and to do all that, you have to leave your job at PNG. What is wrong with you? Ah, and that was just my mom. <laughs> But we did it anyway. We ran as hard as we could. And at the end of the day, we won. And by winning, we became the first Democrat in 100 years. <laughs> Pastor Pierce's introduction to me is, is more generous than I could possibly hope for. But what I'm incredibly proud of, and what he said, is that I made promises to all of you in that campaign. And I'm proud that I kept those promises no matter how hard they work. When I campaigned, I told you to put yourself in the shoes of a criminal defendant. In Hamilton County, you're being prosecuted by someone whose brother was appointed to the county commission. You're in front of a judge whose sister-in-law is the clerk. She's married to the probate judge. Well, it's because of that people in Hamilton County believe you need to have the, the right name to get a fair shake. Well, my name is Aftab, and I'm not related to anybody. <laughs> And now, because of the reforms we put in place, that nepotism, that patronage, it's no longer the driving force in our courts. But we didn't stop there. We drove innovation. We launched the first new website. We launched a health center because of the epidemic of evictions all across our district and our counties. And at the end of the day, we still save taxpayers nearly a million dollars. And now we're running for Congress. And if I could just touch on something personal, I, I, I've i been looking forward to this morning because it's been a tough couple of weeks for me personally. I stand in front of you bloody and broken because of many of the TV ads that are currently running against me, yeah. calling me a criminal, a hypocrite, a liar, and, and just recently now a terrorist. And it has caused me to look within, to figure out what is important to me. Why am I doing this? To battle that insecurity and that vulnerability with truth, with my sacred purpose. And I come back to what, what drives me my strength, what gives me hope and optimism, is that I come back to the fact 
But these are just words. These are just lies. The challenges that folks every day are facing are much, much more important than these silly little lies on television. And what brings me back, what centers me, what gives me greater purpose and greater strength is to realize that this is the most important thing that I will ever do running in this election. What I've done before this, what I do after, it won't matter because this time, this is a critical, perilous time in our country's history. Yes. Because even though we're the most prosperous, wealthiest country in the history of the world, working class families haven't had a raise in 20 years. People are running in place trying to make ends, ends meet while the rich are getting richer and richer, while that wage disparity gets greater and greater, more and more extreme. And it's even worse for communities of color making 73 cents on the dollar. For black women, it's 63 cents. And what has our leaders in Washington done? They voted for this tax bill that gives 85% of the benefit to the richest 1% in our country while blowing a $2 trillion deficit, which they will now fill coming after Social Security and Medicare. Asking all of us to pay for a tax break for billionaires and millionaires. And instead of addressing the onslaught, the attack on our voting rights, purging voters from the rolls, registered voters, our elected officials do nothing. Instead of addressing the real concern of justice reform, they advocate for bigger jails, for tougher penalties, for being tough on crime. That means jailing more people. Well, we have had enough. I know I have. They have had their chance. My opponent's been in office for 22 Woo! years, y'all. He's been running for 40. That's more years than I've been alive. And what do we have to show for it? I feel the fierce urgency of now to get off of the sidelines, to step into the arena, and to demand the change that I know we all believe in. Listen, this is going to be an incredibly tough race. This district was drawn to elect a Republican, but we are right on the issues. We are right on the issues. And as we sit in the house of the Lord, we will also all be judged. Because one day our kids or our grandkids will read about this time in history and they will look us in the eyes and they will say, what did you do? What did you do to stand up to this misogyny and this xenophobia? I want to say I did everything I possibly could. I knocked on all the doors, I made all the phone calls, but most importantly, I showed up in November and made my voice heard. With your help, we can change the direction of this country and make sure that we move forward, not just for some of us, but for all of us. Thank you so much.